What's up? I'm B, and whether you are watching this on YouTube or you are listening to the podcast, I hope you are having an amazing day. Today we are taking a look at a video that was posted on Paul and Morgan's channel on February 1st of this year. It's called What Christian Guys Really Look For in a Wife, and it's actually Paul and his friend having this conversation. I figured since last week I did a reaction to uh, Morgan Oliggs and Bethany Beal doing a little collab. Let's take a look at Paul's collab. Let's see what's going on. Let's see what Christian guys really do look for in a wife and we'll have a little chat about it. But before we get into that, I want to hear your win for the week. Tell me your win if you're watching this on YouTube in the comment section down below. This is just something that made you feel good this past week, made you happy, made you joyful, made you grateful, whatever it is, big or small. I want to hear about it and celebrate with you and my win for the week would have to be that even though I am a little bit sick right now, I don't know if you can hear it in my voice or not, um, I am not like down for the count, which typically when I get sick, it hits me really, really hard, but so far, like I'm decent and so for that, I am grateful. Now, let's get into this video. I'm so interested to hear what it is. I hope that it's good stuff. Like, you know, before we start the video, I do hope that it's these are good nuanced things that they look for in a wife. They're not like superficial or really ridiculous. You know, we saw a little bit of growth on Morgan's side and a lot of people pointed out how different she appears to, you know, present herself and communicate. Um, when she's alone compared to when she's with Paul, it seems like she has a little bit more confidence. And I, I can see where that comment comes from. It was really surprising to hear some of the things that Morgan and Bethany said. And of course, you know, that doesn't mean that this conversation alone negates all of the negative and harmful things that they have spoken about in the past and the harmful ideas that they have perpetuated because they absolutely have perpetuated harmful ideas and those are not okay but it is inspiring to see the growth it's like okay we're making some progress let's keep it moving so I hope in watching this video I feel the same uh, I think I have a little bit of a soft spot for Morgan I can't really explain why even though I call her out there's just some part of me that like empathizes with her and I have a little bit more of a, a harsh judgment on Paul Although, like, they're both participating in the channel. They're both equal parts of it. So maybe that's not necessarily fair, but I'm human. And so that's how I feel. But I'm going to try to be very fair to Paul. I'm going to try and listen with an open mind. And let's see how we feel about it. How are you doing? I'm Paul. I'm Michael. Hi. In today's... <laughs> Michael, I just realized normally I kiss Morgan on the cheek. So we're live, aren't we? Turn towards me. How about the forehead? <laughs> Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Oh, dude, we're absolutely okay. live. Yeah. Okay, um, that's what I thought. I thought we were live, but then you you were, you did our introduction after we'd already talked for like. Yeah, that's just kind of how it works. So I'm not gonna kiss you on the cheek, Michael. Okay. Um, but I am going. Are we getting to some say, good? We're getting some good feedback, aren't we? Oh, they're they're here. They're uh, they're tuned in. They're locked in. Um, you guys, today's video, bringing Michael back on the channel. We were like, you know, what kind of video can we do? And it was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. A Christian guy's video. Yeah, that's that's been our our niche. You that's, say niche, I say niche. It's but both are correct. Correct. That's it. That's what we do. We have really had some good videos in regards to what Christian guys look for. So today we're going there. We're getting real and raw. We're peeling back the layers oh, of the onion. Yeah. The veneer is going. Oh my gosh! On the thumbnail, it's a picture of the two of them, and then the text says, "Guys get raw and honest." And I just thought that was a choice that. That was a choice. Okay. Oh, no veneer, mm -mm. no facade, no facades. We are going, we're getting to the crux of the matter. And we hope that this video really falls on some, some willing hearers. We, we, we hope this is helpful. So Michael, uh, I don't think we delay any longer except to say we have a Christian guys playlist and I know there's at least five videos of yeah. you on there. And, and let me just say before I, cause this is okay, important for me ahead, to share. Man. So when I did those videos with Paul several years ago, yeah. I had been in a season for like almost a decade, guys, where I was hardly dating. God just had me in a season where I wasn't, I would go on dates every once in a while, but I was not in a committed relationship. It had been a long time. And the last three years have been different. God took, that's a totally different story, but God's taken, took me out of that uh, singleness 
uh, lifestyle and I've been dating and recently for actually the past six months I've been dating a gal who uh, very I, I, I love quality gal I love and her name is coincidentally Morgan so it's funny that we both have gals named Morgan who would have guessed it yeah so Qual seriously quality gal wanted to make All sure right. I mentioned that before yeah, I we, start because it, I, I have it's gonna be the same perspective but it'll be a sure. little bit different well and you know I, I'm sad for the ladies in the live chat I just you know as soon as they hear that we're gonna have some spirits that really fall oh. but guys the the advice you're about to receive will help you for your own man similar to michael and similar quality and christian stature all right okay. let's do this michael uh i'll start things off okay and then i want to hear you just just piggyback okay? okay okay i don't think you've heard any of mine on my list and I've it's heard, kind of a surprise we're we're dropping and we could have similar stuff right we could have some similar things that'll be really interesting to see yeah. But um, what Christian guys really look for in a wife, my first one, Michael, is a woman who... All right. So it's going to be interesting to hear what is on Paul's list, but I think it will be even more interesting to hear how many of those things that are on there apply to Morgan and not in a judgmental way, but just t to do a comparison because I oftentimes feel like there are certain things about Morgan that Paul secretly resents. And I'm not trying to like dig into the depths of their relationship. We see small snippets of their lives. Like we are not with them every day seeing all the ins and outs of everything. So I'm not making a judgment on what actually goes on in their home, but from what they present on the internet, that's just the vibe that I get sometimes. And one of those things that makes me feel that way is the fact that they are constantly bringing up how Morgan was not a virgin when they got married. That is something that is constantly being spoken about on their channel that they are bringing up, that they are talking about. They even recently did a video about like what it's like to be a virgin on your wedding night and, you know, full well knowing that Paul was and Morgan wasn't and knowing how seriously they talk about quote unquote sexual purity and remaining a virgin and setting boundaries in place and all this stuff. And I, I wonder if it feels like Morgan's just constantly being wounded by that judgment over and over again and constantly being reminded that in the eyes of our culture and our shared religion, you were unclean. You were not pure when we got married. But now let's use it for content. I just can't imagine how it would feel to be Morgan in that situation and have something that the church judges really, really harshly constantly be used as a form of content and also a reminder of the judgment that other people have placed on you. I can't imagine that it's fun, but of course it's it's her channel and, you know, well, it's her and Paul's channel. And if she's okay talking about it, then that's fine. It just doesn't sound like a great time to me. Leaves a small carbon footprint. She eats very little meat. Yeah, exactly, man. Bill Gates style, dude. Yeah, I just she's, think that's she's, super her, her role model's Bill Gates, right? Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Kidding. Calm down, ladies, conservative ladies. Calm down. That was I mean, not Who mine. honestly wants to have a plant-based <laughs> hot dog? You know? <laughs> that's a terrible idea. But if I've you... heard those are actually... Look, I've had plant-based hot dogs before, and to be honest, they're not bad. I like them. I like alternative stuff like that, though, so they might not be everybody's favorite thing, but I would eat one again. Decent, but I would not want to eat one. My just, aunt tricked me into eating a, a tofu dog once. And are they decent? Are they decent? Uh, when you're tricked into eating it, it actually isn't horrible. But I've when heard you that know what you're eating, it's not good. No synthetic hot dogs. I take that back, you guys. I was kidding on that one. My first one is a woman. It's soy. Come on. It's fine. Who is not consumed with self. Mm. And I'll be honest, Michael, that's tough. In today's day and age, culture is pushing self. The commercials you watch, literally, I saw one not too long ago that ended by saying, worship yourself. They go up through college. It's tough to peel away from that mindset mm -hmm. and not be consumed with self. But, you know, when I'm looking for a wife, when I was looking for a wife, and by the way, just the way that things worked out for me, Michael knows this, I ended up going out on a lot of dates. And so I, I was able to kind of tailor, you know, what am I deeply looking this is not funny, but kind of funny. Um, he's like, oh, it just the way it worked out, I was able to go on a lot of dates. No, you said in your dating book that you literally went back to the high school groups 
after you graduated to make friends and find people to go on dates with. So it just so happened to work out that way. And also, I think there's a fine line between um, like not being too involved with self and being taken advantage of emotionally because you're giving so much of your time and attention to a partner. Because if you do focus on yourself or you do something for yourself or you know, you, you say no to something that they want you to do. It's like, wow, you're so selfish. I'm your partner and you don't want to do this for me or you wouldn't, you know, make the time for me or give me that attention. So I think especially in, um, like more conservative or evangelical religious circles, that is something that you have to be very careful with. And of course that can happen anywhere. Like you could meet somebody who's just a total narcissist and, and gaslights you into believing you're selfish for caring about yourself. But Um, I do think we can also see this where women will get into a relationship and again, it can happen to anybody, but in a lot of times it's women not being able to do the things that they want and fill them up because they're trying to be a good partner and their partner is telling them, well, if you take that time for you or if you don't do this for me, you don't love me, you don't care about me, you're being selfish. So I think that's something that is really, really good to be aware of looking for and were you known as mr lexington for a while uh (laughs) just kidding (laughs) i went out on a lot of dates but honestly though um does this woman have an interest in other people in family and friends in serving a servant's heart or is she just wrapped up in herself talking about herself Mm -hmm. yeah that michael would you agree with that i i think that yeah that makes total sense and i think that selflessness draws selflessness and we're human beings so we're we're naturally in our flesh selfish and i think the only the only thing that can curb that is the holy spirit who gives us a spirit of self-control not to give in and i think that as you were saying culture is so inundated people and women with hey you need to look like this you need to behave like this you need to do this this and that and and oftentimes it's we live and jesus said you know there's the prince of the power of the air that literally influences minds, influences culture. And so I think it's important to be like vigilant to resist that temptation. Resist it. Get around people from your church. Get around you know older Christian ladies. And this goes for guys too, but talking specific to, specifically to the ladies and find a way to kind of remove yourself from that way of thinking, Michael, I can tell you're going to want to go into some mini sermons. And I know you've, you've got it inside of you, man. It boils up. But we got a lot to get to. So next one. Okay, okay. Let's go. Wait. No, so. Paul's, Paul and Morgan are so long-winded. No judgment because I am too. I know this about myself. But he's so long-winded and he wants to be like, Michael, keep it in check. <laughs> also, Paul wants to get on here and be like, everyone is so self-involved and that's not Christ-like at all. When probably 50% of the content on their channel is about themselves and their lives. And I don't think there's anything wrong with sharing your own experiences, but if you're trying to be like Christian influencers and and make content that's going to bring people to Jesus and keep them um, like spiritually fed, I feel like you don't need to make that many videos about yourselves and your experiences. Like if we just look at some of the lives from the past few weeks, I won't read all these titles because obviously some of them are about other things or like current events, topics, stuff that are going on in the world and stuff like that. But the first one is we're selfish. That's their most recent one. There's an unfiltered marriage Q&A part one and part two. There's when Paul could have been seduced in LA story time. There is popular sex advice that we reject, popular marriage advice that we reject, popular dating advice that we reject, how Morgan's premarital sex began story time, Four things we wish we'd done differently in our dating, Christian sex Q&A, part one and part two. And so they make a lot of content surrounding their life experiences, which again is fine, but you can't sit here and be like, I don't want somebody who's self-involved when you spend your time talking about yourself and your experiences for profit on the internet. The one that I have, one of the ones I have is women know your value ladies i should say ladies know your value and you know and and i can i I can be long-winded so i'm going to try to to condense this thank you so 
super important, ladies, to know your value. Know who you are. The bottom line is, here's the truth. Regardless of how you feel, regardless of your emotional disposition, you were fearfully and wonderfully created, every single one of you. Your identity is a daughter of God. You were made in his image, okay? So that means you don't settle for anything other than someone who's going to pursue you in that manner. So if you know your value, you're not going to agree, you're not going to compromise with something less than God's best for you. And I think that's important Woo! to understand. So that, that's the foundation there. Michael, I see, and we've talked about this on the channel, a lot of young ladies that start slipping into relationships where it's true, the guy they're with, he's not leading them to Christ. He's not really a quality man up to their standards, but I think a part of it is an identity issue mm -hmm. and it causes them to kind of a, a self-worth and identity. Yeah. No, like God, I, kind of like you're saying, I'm, yeah. I'm a child of God and and it, that almost it sounds like it could contradict my first one of like, don't be too selfish, but it really is like, yeah. I, I need a man who's going to lead me well and I'm not going to compromise. So knowing who you are, that's good. Michael, have you ever thought about um like leading? As far as that point, knowing your self-worth, I don't see a problem with that one. Obviously, it's important to have confidence in yourself and to know the kind of treatment you will and you will not accept, especially in a romantic relationship. So I like that point. Eating a breakout session at a, a women's conference? I can see. You know, I've, I've gotten, my agent has gotten, you know, phone call after phone call with me being the keynote speaker, but I've had to, no, I've, I've not, actually not. That's not true. Um, All right. You know, I've, I've not. I've not thought about you, that you'd either. You'd be great. So. I don't know if they really do guys as the speakers at women's conferences, but if they did. I could, I could do like the introduction. That, I, I could do like the Ricky Gervais of the, of the yeah the Golden Globes, right? Was it the Golden Globes? Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. All right. My next one. Um. <laughs> what Christian guys really look for in a wife. My next one is. Dude, I was, was going to say, girl. <laughs> Dude, we know the title of the video. You're criticizing Michael for going off and being long-winded because they have a limited amount of time, and you're still going to read that every time you make a point. It's only the second point he's making. But what Christian guys really look for in a wife. Number two. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. All right. We're getting real and raw. That's listen. If you don't want to, if you want a cookie cutter safe video, I hate that word. Maybe don't watch this one. I'm just going to say it. I'm not looking for a woman who's a Democrat. <laughs> Maybe if I was in the dating game 30 years ago and okay. the political landscape was a little different, but in today's day and age, if I'm looking for a wife, guys watching, girls watching, there's too many things saturating the Democratic Party. And that's an interesting thing is you can have, there's plenty out there of, of women and men that say, I, I'm Christian, you know, I love God. And then you see them <laughs> super into these, you know, the, the Democratic positions. For me personally, I'm out. I'm just, I'm out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, add on to that, Michael. I yeah, know you're no. a pretty politically astute yeah. man. Yeah. So I, I, I totally get that. And I think that what I would say as a caveat to that is I get there are people who have been lifelong Democrats, meaning individuals, they call them kind of Southern Democrats, who had social values that were more aligned to biblical truth. And so where we've gotten to today, and Paul alluded, alluded to this, is so much of the core platform of the Democrat Party. It's gotten so obvious to just someone who's willing to look, that it's so antithetical to just simple, basic truth, like morality, moral absolutisms, which God has breathed into the fabric of the world that can't be changed or altered. And so to me, it's more of a challenge if someone is at that point in their life when they're embracing the Democrat Party. It's like, it's no longer the Democrat Party of Jimmy Carter, which by the way, <laughs> Why would you want to be a Democrat in the Jimmy Carter uh, all right, all right. era? You know, <laughs> but on, he, hear me out, and I completely agree, Michael. It's, it's just what it's turned into. Unless you're, you know, living with your head in the sand, you should be able to get a pretty good grid of what's going on. But notice, I didn't say I need a woman who is a radical conservative. I don't need that. I don't need someone who's gone crazy over there. But 
she can't be a radical Democrat. She can't be someone who's embraced those. If she's maybe per, like kind of like what you were saying, clueless, if she's a kind of clueless to it and then I'm able to kind of fill her in, that's one thing. But if she's straight up a Democrat in 2023, that's an issue. Well, and, and you Yeah, if my future second wife is just so young and clueless that she doesn't know um, how to even learn about politics and I can clue her in, then that's okay with me. I can mold her to be exactly what I want. Like that's how that whole section came off to me as. As far as him not wanting to date a Democrat, I think Paul said he wouldn't date a Democrat because he wanted to see the reaction. Like he wanted to stir things up and especially on a live stream because then he can play to his audience and be like, I would never date a Democrat. And knowing the type of audience that Paul and Morgan have, he might think that he's going to get more comments in the live stream of like, oh, me neither. Oh my gosh, Democrats are the worst that, you know, X, Y, Z. And it's going to get more traction. It's going to, um, there's going to be more engagement on the live stream because he specifically said Democrats, as opposed to saying like, I want someone who shares the same values as me, you know, particularly when it comes to X, Y, or Z. Again, just my opinion. You said this, the the core values again, and I, I want to make sure I specify the core values of the Democrat party guys have become so, as I said, antithetical to just the truth that it's, it's, you can't really have a debate and, and, and have a conversation because socially it's so warped and infiltrated the party where it's like it's not a party where you can have conversations about, you know, simple economic issues. Well, it's, we, it's we, can make, we can make a whole video on that. Yeah. You guys can comment in the comment section uh, your thoughts on that one. What's your next one, Mike? So my next Boom. You guys can comment in the comment section your thoughts on that. See, ooh. Paul, I got your number, Amantia. <laughs> Next one is okay. So knowing knowing how to forgive, and it says oh. in Scripture that Jesus says, "He who and you can you can you know put he or she." I think this is uh, applicable. He who has forgiven little forgives little. He who has forgiven much forgives much. Mm-hmm. And basically, what Jesus was saying is like, look, if you don't understand your need to be forgiven, how are you going to forgive? So. I'm looking for someone who's going to be willing to be patient and to extend grace and mercy because here's the thing. I'm imperfect. I struggle. We all do. Paul's imperfect. We struggle. We have our own vices that we deal with. We're working our faith out with fear and trembling. So someone who's willing to extend that mercy and that grace. And and as I said earlier, selflessness is attracted to selflessness. Grace and mercy is attracted to grace and mercy. And so if someone is willing to give grace and mercy and understand the shortcomings, and I can tell you right now, I'll say really quickly, Morgan is learning in our relationship, and she would say this, learning how to extend that because I'm someone who needs that. And she is, and I can, I have openly, okay. will say guys, I need that. And I'm so grateful that I have someone in my life who's willing to extend that to me. So that's good, Mike. You're giving like these, these heavy. That's a good one. People are all imperfect. We're all going to make mistakes. We are all going to need a lot of, you know, forgiveness and understanding, especially in those intimate partnerships. So I'm, I'm good with that one. The hitters, man. And I, I know we talked before and we said that we were going to at least have one each that's maybe like a little more of a... Mm-hmm. It's a, coming. A lighthearted. Per- yeah, it's sure, coming. sure. Uh, Mike, real quick, am I going to get, am I going to get a lot of heat on the Democrat one, do you think? Uh, I think the, and the reason why I wanted to maybe take a little more time to expound on it, because sure. I think that is important for people to understand why you said that, for, because that, that, that's, that's yeah. a more important thing well, to expound on. Here, for instance, those coming in that maybe don't watch much of our channel and they hear that and they just have such a hard time with that. Uh, I, I could say two things primarily that the democratic party is hook, line and sinker embraced. I would say the abortion issue and uh, what do I call it? Uh, just, just, just the gender revolution. The gender revolution. Thank oh. you. Where, Sexual revolution. I mean, that's it's not just something that like oh, fifty percent of the Democrats have embraced. Like it is that that's their platform. And and here's the thing, and because I think it's important because of all the things mentioned, that may be the most important to like expound upon. Because guys, these things are not just outliers. We're like certain people like i think this is important to say paul it's not just the abortion issue and the abortion issue altogether we're both 
you know, unabashedly pro-life. But we're talking about the Democrat Party platform. There was a governor in in Virginia named Ralph Northam, and this was like becoming has become. I, I need to say this, man. All right, I need all to say right, it right, really right. quickly, really quick, quickly. Quick, just, just be you're the one who asked him to go further into that. Oh, you think I'm going to get heat for that? You're asking him to talk about it more, but then you're going to give him that look of like you're you're being too long winded. Also, you know, I I haven't really seen Michael before. The first few minutes, I was like. All right, you know, maybe I can vibe with you. We're taking a turn here. Oh, the gender revolution. Just say that you're a bigot and go. Like, let's move on. Also, I, I called it. Like, Paul brought that up specifically to be inflammatory, and now he wants to capitalize on the controversial comment that he made. So let's just, you know, finish this. Let's get this out of the way. It goes to your point. Very good. This is a platform that he was embracing the idea that you could actually end a child's life after the mother gave birth, a failed abortion. So that is what we're talking about here, guys. That is the Democrat platform. That's not an outlier. This is what that party has embraced. Stuff you see in, in the Old Testament with like pagan civilizations. So, so kind of piggying back. That doesn't sound right to me. I gotta do some Googling. Okay, so this is apparently, this be belief, this misconception is the result of a Facebook meme, which color me shocked misinformation being spread on Facebook in the form of a meme that does not happen ever but according to Reuters.com um, the the meme like quoted Ralph as saying quote and when it's born we will make the baby comfortable until the mother decides if she wants it to live or die end quote um, but the actual quote that he had said was talking about third trimester abortions that are done in cases quote where there may be severe deformities there may be a fetus that's non-viable end quote he said quote if a mother is in labor i can tell you exactly what would happen the infant would be delivered the infant would be kept comfortable the infant would be resuscitated if that's what the mother and the family desired and then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother end quote northam stated this comment was quickly addressed by Republican commentators who, as reported by Vox here, took his words as, quote, an endorsement of infanticide, end quote. At the time, a spokesperson for Northam told Vox the, quote, governor had absolutely not been referring to the euthanasia of infants born after a failed abortion, end quote, and that he was talking about a, quote, tragic and extremely rare case in which a woman with a non-viable pregnancy or severe fetal abnormalities went into labor, end quote. So the core issue surrounding those comments was they were referring to a bill that had been proposed in Virginia um, that would allow third trimester abortions in the case where the fetus was non-viable or giving birth to the fetus would uh, likely kill the woman or substantially harm her physical or mental health. And so I think if, if we want to have a conversation about that, absolutely. That's, you know, for me personally, like that's a really confusing thing to wrap my brain around especially when someone's that far in a pregnancy like I I don't like the idea of that happening however I also recognize bodily autonomy and that there are risks in giving birth and so absolutely like I think that that is something to um, have conversations about and if you don't like the way that that sort of bill makes you feel or if it makes you upset to think about that is totally normal um, and, and totally understandable however to misrepresent what he said in a way like this I don't think that that's a responsible thing to do I think that that's something that's you know shows that you didn't really look into what was actually happening. You just took something and you ran with it. You took something you saw on the internet, which, yeah, I looked this up on the internet, but it wasn't on a Facebook meme. You know, I didn't take something, a small snippet of something from a Facebook meme and be like, here's my really strong opinion on it. It shows that he didn't really look into what was actually happening. And so now when he makes a flippant comment about like, oh, well, Democrats do this or this type of person does that, it makes him less reliable if you know that he didn't look into that one thing. Well, what else didn't he look into that he now has an opinion on and he's stating as a fact? Also, I will link the articles that I quoted from in my description box. That way, if you want to take a look and, you know, confirm that I didn't just pull this out of my ear, you are free to do that. They're, they'll be in the description box. Piggybacking off that one, Michael, this will be a nice segue into my next one. Okay. My next one I have is... I'm looking for a woman 
who has an openness, uh, hold on, an openness rather than a close-fisted stubborn. He said that so passionately, like, I'm really looking for someone who has an openness. And then he forgot what he wrote or he lost his place and he was like, um, uh, an openness. <laughs> it's just funny, like, oh, gosh. I'm really trying. I'm really, really trying to be open-minded, but I'm finding it very tough to not, like, just pick this apart. I'm, I'm doing my best though, you guys. And when I say openness, I'm just looking at, I remember when I would go on dates and it's kind of like, you could, you can sense that when a, a woman is open, an openness towards God, towards her husband, towards change or correction. And even if I were to say, go on a date and she's just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a, a liberal, I'm a Democrat. Let's let's start talking about that. Let's start bringing up the issues we're bringing up. And if she's like, you can pretty quickly tell what her po heart posture is like. But to me, just an openness is a huge deal. And Paul, are you open to hearing other people's beliefs and opinions? Are you open to changing your mind? Do you have that quality in yourself? I would be willing to bet. Probably not. So what you mean when you want somebody to have an openness is that you want them to take what you say as fact and like not question you. And if they have a different opinion, you're going to tell them, no, sweetie, you're wrong. And here's why. And you want her to be like, oh, okay, thank you. When you say an openness, can you specify like what kind of heart posture, what kind of openness you're yeah. looking for it's, specifically? It's a humility to, to hear um, another perspective to be okay, challenged. Yeah. I think some some people just really don't Ooh. like the idea of being challenged. This is, is and this goes perfectly into mine. Actually, you swing it my way, my man. My man. Perfectly segue. So my next one is we're looking for someone. I am, but I think Paul would agree with this. Sure. Who gently challenges? Oh, and so that's, that goes in with what you're saying. It's like and and also can gently challenge, but also can receive a gentle challenge. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, like. That's good. That's good. If, I like gentle challenges. Because we all, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So it's important. Look, I know I'm going to need to be challenged. I don't want someone who's going to who, who's going to be too afraid or too tentative to call me out on things. And I know. Look, I'm an imperfect person. I know I have vices. I know I have things that I need to to help with, assistance with. Just like the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, He convicts. I want someone who's willing to call me out in a gentle way in a very gentle and gracious way, just like I want someone to be able to receive a challenge from me. Yeah, and, and real quick, kind of along the lines of what Michael's saying, ladies, when you're looking for a guy, please find a man who has an openness to receive yes, a gentle challenge. Exactly. A gentle... If there's always defensiveness, if there's continual defensiveness, never an acknowledgement, if there's never asking for, for forgiveness, if, you don't, yeah. if you're with someone yeah. and they never ask for forgiveness... That to me is a key, like how repentant, how how open to asking for forgiveness because everyone messes big. up. Everyone does and they will. Big, big, big. All right, Fall Michael. Your face. Love that. As far as wanting someone who gives gentle corrections or gentle feedback, gentle challenges, I think was the phrasing that he used. If that's Michael's communication style, obviously that's what he's going to want, but not everybody wants to communicate like that. Everyone has different communication styles and so... Um, while I wouldn't take like 99.9% .9 of the things they say as like every Christian guy wants this, I especially wouldn't, wouldn't put that out there because that's just a, a communication style thing. That's not an issue of morality or shared values. People all communicate differently as long as you're being healthy in your communication and you're not like intentionally trying to hurt someone with the way that you're giving feedback. Some people might want that more gentle form of communication and some people just prefer Give it to me straight, like be honest, blunt, straightforward. That's what I like better. So you can't say that one communication style is best for everyone. That, that Very good. Very good little segue piggyback on the openness. Uh, it was perfect, man. Like we, we, we did not plan that, by the way. That was it just was synergy. Well, of course. It's I mean, organic. It's going to happen. That happens when Michael and I get together. Um, Michael, here's my next one. Before I get to one that's a little more edgy. I skipped my serious my okay. I actually skipped one, but it's fine. Okay, okay, that's so good. Well, 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 yeah, that's, all right. Come back. My next one is a woman of the word and prayer. And you know, Michael, I was actually hanging out with a, a friend, a fellow YouTuber, actually, mm. a guy. And he, uh, I was, I was over at his house, and he showed me his prayer closet. And he, he was like, "This is, this is where I, I spend time with the Lord. I spend normally this amount of time." I was like asking him questions about it, and I was thinking to myself, and I told Morgan afterwards, I said. 
someone who can show me their prayer closet, I have a pretty good feeling about them. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know too, too much about all the details of their life. I have a pretty good feeling that that is a quality person. Someone who can show me their prayer closet and say, I spend a good amount of time in there. Yeah. So for a woman too, she's, if, if I'm pretty quickly able to see or realize she's a woman of prayer, she's a woman of spending time in the word, I'm able to relax a little bit. That's, hey, you know, I you think. You feel me? <sighs> being in prayer and having a willingness to, you know, you, you have not because you ask not. And there's there's power in prayer. And I, I can say that praying. Michael. You're making it worse. Not that he would care about my opinion of him, but like constantly just throwing out like those churchy phrases and like the references to the Bible, references to scripture and like using them as little like catchy talking points. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am not a huge fan of that. As far as, you know, being a woman of God and a, a woman who prays a lot, that's a shared Christian value. If you are a Christian looking for another Christian to date, it would make sense that that is a something that you would be looking for as somebody who um, does take the religion and the relationship with God as seriously as you do. That makes perfect sense to me. Being changes things. It does. And it's like being, being that persistent widow in scripture, right? You're going day in and day out, going before God, praying and believing before you actually physically see. And that to me kind of goes with Paul, a person of faith, a woman of faith. Is that yours? Um, no, it's not. Okay. But well, I, that just, that just, it's, yeah, it keeps me thinking like if, if someone's a person of prayer, yes. they're a person of faith. And they, they believe. They got to have that foundation. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, that's so important. Foundation in a relationship. Absolutely. Yeah. Woman I would tell you my prayer closet, but. Well, it, you don't need to have a prayer closet. Well, uh, no, it's not an actual closet. It's a location. Oh. Right? Your car? No, my bathtub. Are you serious? Yeah. All right. I it's, gonna... it's a very comfortable place. Yeah. It's, have, it's some, have somewhere. Even if it's different places. And, and let me just say one thing because this is an important thing to say, Paul. Yeah, I just want to it, – it, you don't have to be super religious about where you pray. Exactly. You don't have to like you know be on the floor with like – be cold. Candles. It's like, you, like oh, you're, oh, you're doing cold. the Benedictine monasticism where you're don't mortifying the flesh. Just find a place where you're comfortable and hey, you know, I sometimes I'll get the hot water on and sit in my bathtub and just I'll pray, you know. That's, Rain in the bathtub. That is that's something. Yeah, that is something. Yeah, <laughs> very good, very good. All right. So the next one is this is a little more laid back, but also I I think Paul would agree with this is holistic fitness. Holistic. How fitness. How dare you, dude? How? You and know so, what? Hold on. So you you want a woman that cares about fitness? I I you? I appreciate. And I can say I appreciate God. one of the things about Morgan that I just so appreciate is her. She enjoys. I'm kidding. Her fitness. I'm kidding. I'm I'm right. I there mean, with she you, enjoys bro. her fitness. Hated or love it, ladies. Hated or love it. That's something that's important to to guys in particular who also care about yeah, that. Yeah, and I think it's it's one of those things where it's like again like things that one person values. They're going to kind of want that value in that other person. They're sure. going to want that person to value it. Because you may have some people who don't care care about that as much. Paul and I both appreciate fitness. Yeah. And one of the things I love about it, it like not only clearly it helps enhance, you know, the, the, the physical person, but it also like it breeds and produces discipline and it demonstrates discipline. Yeah, like good. I can say when that's I good. work out, it just helps me maintain a discipline in my life that I think affects other parts. So, um, and, and Paul and Paul even said this in Scripture, man. He said that there are is some value in physical training. Godly training is, is more valuable, but there is value in physical training. And that's why we said godly training before this. Yeah. And now we move into physical training. Michael, I'm, I'm so right there with you. And I, something that's going through my mind as well, kind of you're talking about the discipline aspect of exercise, is like mental. It helps the whole body. It mm -hmm. helps the brain. It's not just, oh, she's got muscles. Like you are doing something that literally benefits your life significantly, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So good. The messaging that that gives to me is that you have a certain aesthetic standard that is important to you that your girlfriend has and maintain for the entirety of your relationship because they can, you know, give all these justifications of, well, it's holistic health because it's good for your brain. It's good for your body. It shows that you have discipline, X, Y, Z. Like they can give all of those reasons. But really, the, the way I felt about it was the, the underlying message of that is I want you to look a certain way. 
that is very important to me. And if that's important to somebody, just say it, like be open about it. You know, that's how I took it. Because what other reason would there be to say that you are looking for somebody who is holistically into fitness? They're not sitting here saying that, you know, I I really like to go hiking, or I really love swimming, or I really love playing tennis. And so it would be great if the person that I'm with um, like I'm, I'm really looking for someone who enjoys doing those activities with me because it's something that I like to do and I like to spend my time doing it. And so, you know, it, it would be great if the person that I'm dating is also into those things because then we can do them together and it'll be a fun way for us to spend time together and grow our relationship, right? But that's not what they said. They said they want someone holistically into fitness. And to me, that means that it's about the aesthetics and the appearance of the person, which again, if that's what matters to you, that's fine. Just say it. Don't be shady and try and frame it in a way to be like, oh, well, it's because it shows discipline and it, you know, you should take care of your body because Paul said so in the Bible. Like, come on. Um, actually, Michael, I saw like this, I think it was a TikTok video of uh, someone just like going up to different uh, people at the gym and he asked the person asked like four guys, you know, is it, is it important that your the the does the the woman that you pursue have to be in shape or value exercise? And I think like the four guys said yes, See? and then the person went and asked a woman, and she said it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. So that is interesting, but yeah, typically a guy that that cares about that is going to look for a, a woman. Could, could as this well. be something like you ask the audience? Just to say, like girls who are sure. interested in fitness. Ask one them. like Ask them. so okay. So girls who are interested in fitness, is that something you want your potential husband to be interested in? And I also say, if you're not interested in fitness, and there's a guy who really is into fitness, quality guy, meets a lot of the criteria you're looking for, would you be willing to engage and kind of search that out? That's because he, he desires that. So those are kind of both questions. I'm curious to hear. Hear the responses. Yeah, good question. Um, I, I think maybe in general, perhaps I don't know. I, I it'll be interesting to see uh, the results of that. I think perhaps the guys are a little bit more um, concerned with that than the girls, but I would guess that it, it goes both ways to a large, yeah, you know, a large degree. All right, uh, Michael, I'm gonna piggyback off you and say that uh, when I may, maybe this one is a li- is this the controversial one? Oh. Paul's like feigning like it's so hard for him to say it. He's like, I I don't want to upset anybody, you guys. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. But (laughs) when like his entire internet presence is intentionally ruffling feathers. I'm not even going to say that. That this is, I I think this does kind of, a lot of guys are in this camp. When it comes to appearance, there is quite the spectrum there's quite the spectrum for guys quite the spectrum for girls when it comes to looks when it comes to beauty but just as a general rule even the christian guys and we've made videos about this and we've gotten some heat from it but i'm just being real with where i where where i stand what i what i believe um christian guys do look for a woman who takes care of herself who takes care of her appearance just the reality of it and i also put who dresses well but values modesty. Mm-hmm. So that one is kind of like my uh yeah, way to rope that back in. I appreciate it. Wow, what a revolutionary take. I don't know how like the infrastructure of the world is still standing after Paul dropped that bomb that he wants a girl who's aesthetically pleasing and dresses in cute clothes, but not too cute, not too revealing. Are y'all okay? Do we need to take a minute before we keep going with this video and just like have a little bit of a breather because we're so shocked that that's a point that Paul would make? In general, I don't think that's a super controversial opinion. Everyone's into different things. Everyone has their own style, but whatever that style might be, it would make sense that you would be romantically interested in someone who is visually appealing to you. Like, I, I don't think that that's something that's just oh my gosh, how could he say that? That's just me. That's just how I feel about it. Everyone has their own style. Everyone has their own likes. So to me, that's not the most ridiculous thing for Paul to say. Woman who dresses well, but she's not just out there 
to flaunt it for all the guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I think that's that's fair. And I I would say, to piggyback on that, it's not about you worrying. Like, I think that sometimes people can get in their minds, well, I don't, I need to present myself in a way to my husband or to my boyfriend because if I don't present myself, he's not going to love me, he's not going to care about me, he's not going to like me. It's more about just having the posture of like, look, here's a preference they have. This is a preference. And it's about, and it goes vice versa. It goes, you know, you're going to have preferences too. And that the guy should be willing, like, look, here's a preference they yeah. have. I need to be willing to meet that preference. And obviously there's outlandish Whoa. preferences. And that's mm-hmm. that goes, you have to be willing to die to those. But this, a preference like Paul mentioned is like, look, I want someone, I desire someone who who takes care of themselves, who presents, them, presents themselves in a way that is desirable. And I think there's a fine line with demanding that and preferring that. And it's just about a selfless love. Like if you're being selfless, you're going to want to satisfy that, that desire from your significant other. I love the way Michael just ended that. If you desire to be selfless, if that's your heart posture, if that's your openness of, you know, these are preferences of, of this person I'm pursuing that's pursuing me, you're going to want to hear and you're going to want to respond. You're not going to want to stiff arm it. Yeah. Love that. Guys. What does that even mean? Okay, that just took on a whole new angle because before I'm like, oh yeah, you know, people like to be with people that they find visually appealing. That makes sense to me. And now we go over here after what Michael just said and I'm like, wait, what? Are you saying that like if, if you meet a girl and you have great chemistry and you really just prefer blondes over brunettes, then maybe she should be selfless and, and give you that because she has everything else, but it's, she just doesn't have that hair color. I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of it, but I'm like coming up blank. Like, what does that mean? Can we get an example, please? Maybe, maybe they'll go into an example. Comment below. Let us know your thoughts on these things. Go ahead, Mike. Paul, yeah. fun one. Just a super, super fun one. What about... Okay. Girls who just really enjoy a good movie. I mean, we both value that, right? So you want to now go like just extremely personal preferences? Well, just like, I mean, you know, we we both value someone who like, we have certain hobbies and interests, right? And so it's like... These are all personal preferences. Do you think it's... So this is an important question for you because sure. I think people want to hear this. Sure. Is it, would it be super rare for... Is it super rare, I should say, for a guy... Who is who has hobbies that are super different than a girl he's interested in? Are typically the hobbies going to overlap, That's or is there going to be? You know what I'm saying? Do you can can there be that overlap there, or is it typically? You know what? You're most likely going to be with someone who has very similar hobbies and interests. As a dating and love expert, extracurricular, I should say. Mm-hmm. As a dating and love expert, I would say that there definitely are relationships that work well where. Was that sarcasm or is he genuinely saying that he's a dating and love expert? Coming into it, they really had very different hobbies, but they just connected. They just gelled as two people. But I think the important thing is that they do learn to at least come each other's way so there's some overlap in the hobbies because you don't want two people that virtually live two completely opposite lives. Mm -hmm. So that's my thoughts on it, but I think oftentimes – it will look like similar hobbies to an extent. But you know, like for example, like a, someone who enjoys watching movies as a hobby, if you really like doing that, and it's like if you're yeah. trying to date someone who just doesn't like that at all, that's a conversation you're going to want to have probably before you get see, married. See if there's going to be you some know what compromise. Saying? Because, yeah. Some compromise in that area. And, and you need to have that compromise for sure. Like I know for me, I probably go on 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 the side of like, wanting to do that too much as a hobby and i need to be more willing to like you know play games board games sure oh board you know go to the aquarium which i i would like doing but i just getting out and doing it is one thing you know in the comment section right now movies board games which one would you prefer michael and i i'm saying it's got to be 80 20 like i would say 90 10 yeah it's movies for both of us but let us know you guys what your preferences are seriously guys comment below I like board games. I was actually thinking about this the other day because like when we do sibling nights with my siblings and their spouses and we all get together, we tend to play Cards Against Humanity. But uh, like party games, when's the last time like a really good party game came out to play with people? That's beside the point though. I will say that as someone who is not a movie person in the slightest, I am married to someone who is very much a movie person and 
I can't say that it's caused any sort of significant issue in our relationship. I will say it's nice when you can find shared hobbies with your spouse or with the person that you're dating because that's fun stuff that you can do together. But I also think it's really important to remember that even though you're in this partnership, you are a team, you're still your own individual person. You still have your own desires, your own interests, your own things that you want to do. And honestly, I do think that if your spouse has a hobby or activity that they like to do that you're not a huge fan of, I do think that every now and then you should be like, yeah, I'll come with. I'll tag along. Let's go do that. Let's have fun doing something that you like to do. But, you know, it, sh it should be a reciprocal thing that they also take an interest in your activities and not that they participate with you every single time you want to do that thing, but that they come with every now and then and because they know that it's important to you and it's quality time together. So that's just my opinion. That's how I feel about it. But I don't think that it's super, super important that y'all share the same interests like all the way down the line. Let us know your thoughts on Michael and I's list. Uh, guys in the comment section, what would you add to that list of the important things that you're looking for in a wife? We love you. We will catch you guys again very soon. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and click the playlist. Go search it out. It's really easy to find in the playlists. It's great to be with you guys. Christian, great to be guys. with you more, Paul, again. And your audience is awesome. You have a very loyal... We got the best... An, an audience best of audience. true fidelity. Oh, that's an interesting way to say it. Best audience on YouTube right here. Go uh, watch the Christian Guys playlist. Uh, Michael and I will be right back to chat with you guys in the live stream. We love you. Have hope. And Oh, be free. So you still have it. The, the, oh, we do okay. still do that. Okay, have hope and be free. Have I hope know that. and be, be free. free. Those in the live chat, we will be right back. All right. Well, that was interesting. I did have kind of high hopes for this video because of, again, how I felt after watching the conversation between Morgan and Bethany, I was like, man, we're seeing some good change, some positive growth here. I can't say that I feel the same after watching this video, but it's okay. It's all good. Life will go on. Obviously, I shared all my opinions as we were watching the video, so if there's anything that you want to share or any thought you have, of course, leave it in the comment section down below if you are watching this on YouTube. And while you're doing that, if you would consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel, that would be incredible. If you are listening to the podcast and you would consider leaving a rating or a review, that would be amazing. Also, I can now see how many people follow me on Spotify. So if you are uh, listening to this on Spotify and you feel like following the show, that would be really awesome too. And if you've done any of those things already, thank you so much. I am so appreciative of you and I love being able to just sit here, hang out with you and talk about whatever. Thank you so much for watching. Please be kind to people and I will see you in the next one. Bye.